Hi, my name is Jeremy Powell, and I'm a Brooklyn-based musician. I'm uh, mostly a saxophone player, and, as well as clarinet and flute. Uh, but occasionally I make music under the alias um, Otterkeia, which is A-U-T-E-R-K-E-I-A, -E uh, which is basically uh, music that I like to make uh, here at home, uh, kind of uh, bedroom producer style. Um, and I recently just put out a full-length album under that alias called Disco Tapes. Um, and it has a very analog cassette-ish sound to it. And I've had uh, quite a few friends ask me, um, man, how'd you get that sound? Like, what did you do? How did you, how did you come up with it? And it, it was it was a process um, that I kind of, kind of formulated as I was working on the album. Um, I had something conceptually sound-wise in mind um, at the beginning, but as I went through it, I kind of finalized kind of a process to get the sound that I got um, for the album. So I just wanted to make a little video um, kind of explaining things uh, and maybe it'll inspire or uh, get some creative juice and juices flowing for some other people uh, working on music, you know, at their own, on their own or in a studio or with the band, whatever. Uh, hopefully it, you know, gives you some good ideas because um, it was a lot of fun uh, to work on and, and get the sound I got. And if you're interested, if you haven't heard it yet, um, you can listen to it on Bandcamp. Uh, right now, that's the only platform it's on. Um, I'll put it on my website pretty soon. I've been a little lazy on that front. Um, but right now, you can only listen to it or buy it on Bandcamp. And yeah, so basically, I made the album only using my old iPhone 5C, the Boss DR202 drum machine, my flute and my clarinet, and this cassette player and yeah I just use those to make the album if you like making beats or music download the figure app um, the same people that made reason uh, propeller head is the company name they make this really awesome fun app called figure um, I have it for you know iPhone obviously and yeah so you can make beats super easy very intuitive uh, I was, you know, when I would wait, when I was at an airport waiting for a plane, or waiting for a train. Uh, one of the one of the songs on the album is called Peak Skill. I made while waiting for a Metro North train to go up to visit my brother. Um, another one is called South Bend. I made uh, when I was on tour with uh, a Nanette out in South Bend, and we were driving around to the next gig, and I was in the car, and I made a beat, and uh, yeah, you got drums, bass, and uh, synth lead sounds all kinds of sounds from from the original program reason super great sounds um, you can quantize stuff you can add swing to it uh, there's even like kind of like a compression that has some really nice ducking or side chaining sound to it and so eventually I came up and you know, I had you know like over 10 beats or something that I really liked um, I wanted to do something with so what I did is I basically audio out of my iPhone into, uh, I have an Apogee Duet interface, going into Ableton Live. And I would just DJ these songs live on the iPhone into Ableton. Because um, obviously, you know, you start a beat. So it's got a mixer on it. And you can, you know, you mute different parts. You can bring stuff in. You know, so basically, I would just live on the spot improvise a song using uh, my iPhone into Ableton. And I got lucky. <laughs> it's not always the easiest thing to do, but luckily I would get like, I got like three good takes um, that I was happy with on, on each of the beats I made. Um, there were 10 beats. One didn't make the album, but there's nine on the album now, so... And basically, I would just, from those three takes, I would decide which one do I want to go with, and I would decide. And so there I have a, I have a good take. You know, it's just one audio file. Um, I bounced everything in at like 92K, 32-bit, uh, so, you know, trying to get the highest quality. Um, but then, you know, it sounds great, but it's really clean. It's very digital. I wanted to add something that would make it, you know, give it some character, um, give it some life. So... That's where this guy came in. 
So what I would do is I would basically audio out of the interface from the headphone jack, a mic in, an input here. So I would just go input into here and I would monitor it through the headphone side. You know, I'd adjust the output from my, from my uh, interface, go in here, find a good, uh, good volume where obviously you're gonna have some distortion. This isn't the greatest cassette fidelity player, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so I would just find a, a sound that I was happy with and I would just record it. And so now that beat is on cassette, but I've got to then bounce this back into Ableton. And here's where it gets a little tricky. This has a variable speed dial, luckily, which is great. Um, but when I would bounce it back into Ableton, I had to, it took me a few times. I would put it in the middle, but it wouldn't always line up with the original file from my phone. So I had to play with it. I found where it would mostly sync up, but it still would never sync up. Sometimes there would be sections that would line right up and there were other sections that would lag or sometimes be ahead um, because of the tape, just obviously the inconsistencies of the tape playing back. So I had to do quite a bit of editing. This top file is the original file for my phone. Here, is the cassette file and so obviously I had to chop it up quite a bit to get it to line up um, throughout the song. Here I can zoom in and out. So there you can see how much I had to chop to get everything to line up with the original. That was a process but it was cool. It, I mean it sounded really cool when it was done. So I'll play a little bit. So that's just the phone file. And then there's the cassette. And the cassette audio had a really cool vibe, especially with some of the synth lead lines. You know, it all just depends on the, the frequencies that are happening. Um, and the, tra the tape treats everything pretty differently. So it was really cool to, to hear how, you know, the differences and how it responded to the sounds and everything. So what I would do is I would basically group the iPhone file and the cassette file together and I would try to mix those appropriately to where I got a sound that I was happy with between the two of those. I would use uh, an auxiliary, excuse me, a send track and I would send some of the iPhone file, so the iPhone file had the most bass to it, obviously, because the cassette is gonna, this doesn't have the best frequency range. I think things kind of dropped off below 400 hertz or so. Um, so I had to send bass from the iPhone file over to a send track where I had an EQ with just, you know, those bass frequencies notched out and then a compressor after that. So I was able to really boost the kick and such on those. And then I would use that, that signal um, as a side chain on other tracks that I was compressing um, to really get the, you know, the kick pumping um, and happening. Because obviously dance music, you know, kick is king. And then so from there, I have my, my song, but I wanted to add horn parts. So I would just basically sit and kind of whistle and hum and come up with some horn parts and where I thought they worked and sounded great. And then I would record those. And then also with those, I would run back through the cassette player the same way. Um, and then there were parts, some of the songs, a couple songs don't have horns. And what I would do is I used DR-202 has a ton of really great classic bass sounds um, because it has like all the drum machine sounds from the old 606s, 707s, 808s, 909s and all the bass sounds that um, I guess came with those drum machines I'm assuming. Um, so basically I just took those bass sounds and I would pitch them up within the within the machine uh, you know to three or four octaves and then I have some nice kind of key sound, synth, key, synth lead sounds if you want to call them and I would just play those in the track. And then same thing with those. Um, I would bounce them out into this. Now on some of the tracks, 
I didn't go directly into this. What I did is I wanted a little more air, a little more room sound around some of those sounds. So I would set this up on a music stand, basically so you can see my monitors behind me. Um, I was mainly using the Yamahas, the, the white speakers. Um, and I would basically set this up, I'll turn it around so it's, and it would be, you know, maybe about here, about tweeter height. All right, get it at the height of the tweeters and about at that, you know, the a triangle point where everything's equal. And I would just record the sound from the speakers on some of the horn parts and also some of the parts that I use um, with those pitched up bass sounds from the DR202. So that way I'm getting some of the room sound and some air around those sounds and it's so that's not a direct sound with nothing else coming in. You know, it gives it a little more life, it gives you a little more sense of the space um, around around the music. Um, and some of those sounds really, I was, I was yeah, it, it, was, it was cool. I really liked how it, how it turned out. Um, and then, yeah, I would just put those back into the mix and I would still, the horns, I always recorded in with a mic and then I would, you know, bounce them out through through this somehow, either directly or using these speakers. And I would always mix everything back in with the original uh, clean uh, files. Um, and then that way I can kind of pick and choose how much of the original clean file I want, or if I want more of the analog, you know, cassettify sound on that. And then I would put everything together obviously um and that's pretty much it how it went <laughs> you know this this thing definitely gives you it gave me a lot of options kind of added a little more life and a little more breath um into a lot of the a lot of the sounds and uh obviously give me options as to how much of the sound i can put into the mix and uh yeah it definitely gave it a, a very cool vibe i'm sorry this video isn't like super fancy i don't have <laughs> Final Cut or uh, Adobe Premiere or anything, um, you know, just the iPhone and whatever. But I hope for the friends that were inquisitive about the sound of the album and such and anybody else that hears it and wonders, I hope this is helpful. And uh, wherever I post this, of course, if you have questions or whatever, just feel free to post the questions and I'll do my best to respond and whatnot. But yeah, hopefully... Uh, you can check out the album and hopefully you dig it. Yeah, cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. Thanks.